Hi everyone, Lisa Stones Peck here from Spellbound Miniatures. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Click subscribe if you haven't done already and the bell for notifications, then you'll get notified of any other videos that we release. Today we're going to be making our book nook and we're going to do this like we did the room box series. So um, a set of bite sized videos where we kind of go piece by piece and stage by stage so that you don't get too overwhelmed and we're going to create a fabulous book nook. This one's going to have a medieval theme, uh, it's for a friend of ours, they've requested that so this is a little something, I don't normally go down the medieval lane so that'll be fun for us to do that and also we're going to be bringing in a very exciting element from another miniaturist so make sure you stay tuned for that. So to get started um, the SVG files are free in April 2020 and also there's a, a PDF version too. You'll see this is a very lovely arch shaped window cutout. This is going to be in the SVG but it's not um, essential so if you don't want to do the medieval theme that's fine. You also get another um, a back wall the same dimension so you can either have a window wall or a plain wall and I'm going to be backlighting this window so this is going to be a faux back wall I'm going to have two one behind the other and then there's going to be lighting in between so that's why I've done this but you don't have to do it that way also in the SVG we've got the top and the bottom of the room box and then we've got the two sides and this one you'll have seen on Instagram and Facebook. I've already started with the lovely castle stone wall effect. That's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So these are the basic parts. I don't know if you can see that yet. We've got the two side walls, the back wall and the window wall, whether you want to put that as the back wall or bring it forward and then the top and the bottom. This is quite a large room box. I wanted to do it because I knew I was going to have a seven inch high window in there and then there's a window surround so we needed to have quite a large one. Um, this is 12th scale but of course with SVGs you can just shrink the whole thing down and make it slightly smaller if you wanted to dimensionally. Um, the only thing you'll need to remember if you do that is this has been designed for two mil chipboard so if you took it down a little bit you might want to use one and a half mil thick chipboard or um, matte board whatever you've got so that's the only thing you need to remember when scaling the files down or up is to make sure that you also scale down or up the thickness of the material so we're working on the side wall and you'll see that I've stopped at a certain point there with the brickwork and that is so that my window wall will sit there and also from the top down if I carried on with these dimensional brick fronts it would push this wall out and then of course the top piece which is designed exactly to fit the layer of chipboard depth that we've got and on the other side would then there'd be a gap so that's why I've got this layer that looks slightly sort of flatter than that one. So if you do want to do the inset wall, make sure not to carry your bricks past the point of where you want the depth of your wall. And that's up to you. I've just decided it's two inches and that gives me enough room to get some lighting in there. So the first thing we'll need to do if we get our standard side wall is we create an exact same size of this but in craft board and I used the debossing file, the debossing tip sorry and a debossing file and I debossed just the pattern onto the craft board. Normally I would deboss straight onto the chipboard but this particular batch of chipboard didn't seem to like that so I've done it onto the craft board and it doesn't come out quite as deep as it would on the chipboard but still there's enough there that if you wanted just to use this craft board layer you could do that and put it straight onto the chipboard and you could just dry brush over it to pick up the relief um, of the top of the stonework and you'd still get a pretty good 3D effect but 
what I then did was take the same file, another sheet of craft board, but instead of debossing, I cut the pieces. So if you can see there, I've actually cut the craft board uh, sheet with the exact same bricks. I'll just turn it upside down because that's easier. Um, and also another thing to note about this brickwork file is that it's mirrored. So the, if you can see there, hopefully you can see that, it's identical top and bottom and there's a definite sort of one side has the larger bricks and this other side doesn't. So there's a left and a right if you want one, but they're actually the same top and bottom. So you don't have to worry about mirroring it, you just turn it round. Um, so on the first sheet I did, now I know that this is my front because this is where the two back walls are going to go. So I've got the larger bricks at the front. So when I do the other wall, I'll make sure that I've got the larger bricks are going to be at the front to mirror this and then I'm going to cut off that side of two inches for the non-raised part. If that's too complicated for you, you don't have to sort of get the, the, the um, walls the same. It's just one of those things that I like to do. So that's why I've done that. So the first thing I'm going to do is and I've kept these on here, by the way, so that I can literally work piece by piece, get my debossed file and literally transfer each piece over so that I don't get lost in that pattern. That is quite long winded. I would preferred to have debossed it completely, but it didn't want to do that. So we have to work with what we've got. Um, and I just need to, you can just see here, there's a slight, although it's mostly cut out this craft board, there's a slight bit there that hasn't cut all the way through. So I'm just going to run my knife just along that gap and take that out. And then it, the whole of the craft board goes on the whole of the side piece. It's only when we come to the bricks we need to remember to cut off however many inches if you want to do that. So as you can see, hopefully, if I take the two up, these are now mirroring each other. I don't have to worry about that at this stage because either way round, it doesn't matter until we start putting the bricks on. So don't worry about that. Glue your sheet of craft board onto your sheet of chipboard. There's only one way it goes because it's taller than it is wide. Um, I'm going to use a glue stick for this. It's drier, there's less water in it and it doesn't warp. So I glue stick the whole of this on there and then I have got my slab of granite worktop saver that I press the whole thing under and that keeps it nice and straight whilst it dries. So I'm gonna glue this on now and then we'll come back. So whilst that's waiting to dry, I'm going to cut off the excess bricks that I don't want to use. This is optional. I've marked two inches in from either side of the edge that I don't want. So I've got this piece here to match up a mirror. So I know that this is, this is the right way around. I've drawn a pencil line and then I'm going to very carefully, because I'm, I'm on my Cricut mat so I don't want to go through, literally just run down with my knife blade and cut through the craft board. And even if you don't go all the way through, just going through a few layers makes it easier when you take the brick off, you know you've got it exactly like that one's moved because my mat's not very sticky. But it just makes it easier then to know exactly where you need to cut it. I'm gonna leave that like that now and then I'll be able to, where that score line is, we'll focus in on that you can see I can just do that by hand when I'm fitting this particular brick. But as I said, my mat's not very sticky, so hence why I've got a couple that have lifted. Um, we might have to freestyle that one, it got a bit grunged up in the machine. But that's okay, craft board's easy enough to cut and you won't see any sort of minor differences once we've done the paint effect on all of that. Okay, so that's now dried. 
If you find that maybe your craft board cuts slightly larger than your chipboard, now's a good time. If you see an overhanging gap or edge, sorry, cut along that, just trim it up because these edges do need to be square so that they all fit and glue together on the base and the top and the side. So check that out first. Make sure that if you've already done one, that this one's going to mirror it if you want to do that. So I've got my two large blocks there so I know that this half is or this half this last bit here is not going to have any bricks on so I've lined up this the same way around so I've got my large blocks here it doesn't matter which way up as I said because they're mirrored top and bottom so if you've got a Cricut tool or tweezers it's good to start with I think one of the bigger pieces and lift that off and then you kind of start your pattern from an easy piece and work your way out and it literally will lift off. We'll put some glue on the back and then match it up with where it should be on the pattern and stick it on. I'm using tacky glue for this. You could use a glue stick again, whatever you've got to hand. Because this is, I'm gonna do a thin layer and I weigh it down as it goes, so it's not so crucial to me about using the glue stick for warpage. So, the one thing you do want to make sure is that it doesn't go over that line there, but just line it up with the debossing pattern as best you can. And then I have my stainless steel bench block, so I'll put that over, put it sort of down, top down rather than sideways, or it might move it slightly. So uh, once you're happy that that's where it is, gently put that on top and then put some good music on. I'd say get a cup of tea or coffee and then just relax and we're going to do one brick at a time. Okay, that's that done. I had a few, I had to finish off cutting by hand because like I said earlier, my mat wasn't very sticky. Normally I'd run it through on the same cut twice. So um, I had to finish those by hand, that's okay. Um, at least I didn't have to cut all of them by hand. And there were a couple that, because the mat wasn't sticky and they sort of came off and got a bit mashed up, I just filled those in, cut them by hand, literally out of another um, spare bit of stone and also you've also got these bits down here that you can use so that's that what I'm going to do now is put the whole of this under my granite slab and so that everything gets pressed down well and um, that's the two walls done so we'll come back next time and I'll show you how I prep them and decorate them because I like to decorate my walls and floors before I assemble. It's so much easier. So thank you for joining me today and I'll see you in the next chapter.